This morning on CBS 2 News, police release body cam video one year after the deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. What the new footage reveals about the deadly attack. Plus, a new bill taking aim at drag shows in Idaho. A look at the argument from both sides. Plus, Boise State facing off with Air Force tomorrow. What a win could mean for the Broncos. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Happy Friday, folks. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look for you of downtown Boise on this Friday, October 21st, 2022. Well, hey, colder air moving on in. You might not know it right now. A little cooler as you're stepping out the door mm -hmm. this morning, but the big push of cold air moving in later on today. Yeah, later on today, we're going to see that cold front really set in here in the Treasure Valley. It's going to bring precipitation. It's going to bring cloud cover. So an end to these sunny temp sunny conditions we've been dealing with over the past couple of weeks. Now today's high going to be 68 degrees by 9 a.m. It'll be about 50 degrees. That'll jump to 59 by 11 a.m. leading to that high by 5 p.m. Here's a look at temperatures right now. 49 degrees in Boise, 47 over in Nampa, and 42 degrees in Ontario. 38 in Mountain Home, a little bit chillier there, and 37 degrees up in the mountains in McCall. Here's a look at future cast. We're going to see those clouds start to roll in tonight, and that's when the precipitation will make its way in as well. We're going to see clouds throughout the day tomorrow, as well as spot showers throughout Saturday, and that'll bleed into Sunday as well. Sunday, we may start to clear up just a little bit heading into the day, but that morning definitely going to still be cloudy with a chance of a few spot showers. Now, high temperatures for today, 69 degrees here in Boise, 70 degrees going to be the high in Emmett, Caldwell, Nampa, as well as over in Mountain Home and Ontario. So 70 degrees looking like the trend across the valley and then up in the mountains, 55 degrees going to be the high in McCall and 64 going to be the high in Idaho City. Looking forward to it. We need that rain. Thank you, Vasily. It is 502 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Yeah, looking good. Everything very quiet. Obviously, volume is very low as of this morning. Not looking at any reports of anything slowing you down if you're heading out early this morning. But of course, when you do get in the car, just make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, Boise Police just released body cam video. It's showing the response from two officers to last year's deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. And we do want to warn you that the video may be disturbing to some. <laughs> <laughs> On October 25th of last year, the shooter killed two people at the mall. Several others, including a police officer, were injured. In the video, as police officers approached the shooter, he opened fire. One officer fired back before advancing, then finding the suspect behind a dumpster from a self-inflicted wound. We know that there are a lot of thoughts, emotions, and feelings as we approach this one-year anniversary, and we recognize what a, uh, what a huge impact it was to our entire community. The Twin Falls prosecuting attorney reviewed that investigation, determining the officer was justified in his use of deadly force. He said as well, quote, by doing so, he likely saved the lives of many citizens. Well, a draft bill in Idaho aiming to ban drag performances in public spaces when kids are around. Now, the Idaho Family Policy Center says it wants to, quote, protect the virtue of children. But those against the bill say it's dangerous for a group of people that's already marginalized. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall spoke to both sides. The bill drafted by the Idaho Family Policy Center would ban drag performances in public when children are present. The bill would also allow parents to sue if their child saw such a show and was harmed by it. In that instance, um, the, the child and the family would have what we call a cause of action to sue for damages um, to recover for the harm that they suffered. Blaine Kanzadi is president of the Idaho Family Policy Center. He's not concerned about a constitutional challenge to the bill. 
The state constitution says that the first responsibility of the state legislature is to pass laws that promote public morality, public virtue, and protect the purity of the home. He argues drag performances are inherently sexual and kids shouldn't be around them. Drag just in general, you have men on stage in lingerie acting as a woman and this just isn't appropriate for kids. Dee Banks has been a drag performer for 22 years. I started drag because it was a way for me to express myself that I wasn't allowed to express when I was a teenager in high school. For Dee, drag is a kind of art. Drag shows are an expression of pop culture, whatever's relevant in, in the time or whatever's happening. Anything that might disturb you, a sexual performance in the park, that's already illegal. We don't have to worry about that. And I think what this group is trying to do is create a boogeyman and create fear. Um, around a certain community. Democratic lawmaker Laura Nekochea says she believes that fear is dangerous. A bill like this could attempt to criminalize just being transgender and just walking, you know, down the street or being in a public place. The part that's not laughable is the fact that the suicide rates are going to skyrocket because people are going to be repressed. The bill comes as we've seen a burned pride flag and LGBTQ community centers windows smashed in Boise in recent weeks. We've already seen some targeted attacks on the LGBTQ community in Idaho and here in Boise. So what would you say to someone who thinks, you know, a bill like this could only make things worse for that community? So um, this legislation is not attacking any particular group or any particular person. It's simply saying that certain sexual behaviors don't belong in public. Nakuchea expects strong opposition if the bill is brought before the legislature. Now, if the bill were to pass the Idaho legislature, Nekachia says it'll almost certainly end up in court. Well, parents met at CUNA High School yesterday evening discussing mental health. It's the Save the Family event that let parents hear from experts on the major forces impacting kids in today's world. They say things like social media are having a huge impact on our kids. Now, Kelly Rich is a school nurse and the organizer for the event. She says she's seen firsthand some of the issues kids have with mental health and wants to give parents the tools they need to better understand the challenges their kids face. Once they start getting into middle and high school, that's where I see panic attacks a lot, a lot of depression and anxiety. Kelly says one of the best things you can do is to wait to give kids access to social media until they fully understand the effects it can have on them. For more events like this one being planned for the future, you can go to committosixteen.org to learn more about those local upcoming events. And if you or a loved one is struggling with mental health, don't be afraid to reach out. You're not alone. The Idaho Suicide Crisis Lifeline, always available. You just dial the number on your screen, that's 988. You don't have to be suicidal to give them a call. Well, hey, happening tomorrow, the Broncos heading to Colorado Springs for their game against Air Force. Now, it's been a chaotic first half of the season for the Broncos, but things are settling down for Boise State, still atop the Mountain West. Now, this week's Air Force clash gives the team the chance to virtually eliminate one of their division rivals from conference contention. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. They're, they're great at what they do. They do it well, and they do it better than anybody else in the country, and so it's our job to to do our best to make sure that again we're in the right places at the right time and, and working all together because you got to stay, you got to stay on the string. Everybody's got to do their part every single play. If, they, if there's a chink in the armor, they'll find it. And so that's going to be a challenge for us. If you want to see the game in person, you can catch the game. Or if you want to catch the game again, uh, it is again away from home. You can catch it on CBS Sports Network. That's at 5 o'clock p.m. on Saturday. Pardon me there. <laughs> I was going to say, if you want to drive to Colorado Springs, it's like a 13-hour yeah, drive. 13-hour drive. That, yeah. That's a little bit too much for me. I don't know about that. Well, but. you'll get to see a lot of the Falk leaves changing, mm -hmm. and I know we have those winds blowing our way. Yeah. So what can folks expect tomorrow if they're catching the game? I mean, they may be inside, but they may be doing a little grilling too. Yeah, the rain is definitely on its way here. We're going to experience a cold front here in Boise. But as for the game tomorrow, the game in Colorado Springs, it's going to be a nice day. Sunny skies over there in Colorado Springs. 
spring, 70 degrees looking like the high by game time at 5 p.m. But here in the gem state, we're going to see showers late today, and that's going to be the beginning of this cold front that starts to move in. We're going to see periods of rain Saturday, and there's going to be snow around 6,000 feet or higher. So those mountain areas may be getting some snowfall Saturday. And for much of this weekend, we're going to see chilly and winds especially start to get up there as well. Now that high pressure we've been dealing with for the past couple of days is on its way out and we're going to see this low pressure system make its way in. We'll start to see those showers overnight Saturday and they'll continue on throughout Saturday. As I said, we're going to see periods of rain throughout and then early next week. We also have a chance of rain as well. As you can see that big rainstorm over there will make its way in around Monday or Tuesday. High temperatures for today, 69 degrees here in Boise, 70 degrees throughout much of the rest of the valley. 70 in Mountain Home, Nampa, Caldwell, Emmett, as well as over in Ontario and then up in the mountains. 55 degrees going to be the high in McCall. Taking a look at the next five days, we're going to see a big cool down. Today's high 68 degrees. That'll drop to 55 degrees on Saturday, and we're going to stay in the mid 50s throughout much of the weekend and into early next week. This is going to be a trend we see for the next couple of days with those highs in the mid to low 50s. So getting chillier over here in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, that is a steep drop off there. Vasily. Oh yeah, 13 degree drop off from today to tomorrow. Definitely getting chillier over here. All right. Yeah, no, prepare ahead. Thank mm -hmm. you. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Taking a live look out there at I-84 this morning. Yeah, everything is looking good on this Friday morning, folks. We made it again. It's a little sleepy start. Of course, volume's going to continue to tick up as we head closer to that six o'clock hour, even more in the seven o'clock hour, but not much to report as far as anything in your way of that commute. So when you get in the car, make sure you're turning on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, more airstrikes shock Ukraine. The action being taken against Russia and Iran as hundreds of attacks hit the country. Plus, look to the sky. The light show happening now as a famous comet flies by. Hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Nearly 40% of people polled admit they don't have the confidence to do this. That answer, trying some new fashion trends. Now that's fun, guys. Try to be a little brave. You can do it. Now for today's question, According to a new survey, women say they feel more creative if they have this nearby. All right, folks, what do you think it is? CBS 2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecasts across the Gem State over in Emmett. 67 degrees and partly cloudy sky is going to be the conditions today. That'll drop to 46 degrees tonight and that's when the rain will roll in and we're going to see a high of 55 degrees tomorrow in Emmett. Moving over to Stanley, one of the areas where we'll see snow tomorrow, 50 degrees the high there today with partly cloudy skies. That'll drop to 29 degrees overnight, leading to a high of 35 degrees tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, new airstrikes shook cities in Ukraine this morning. The U.S. confirming that Russia has used drones from Iran in this week's attacks and that their military officials were in Crimea. Now, already Europe has taken steps to penalize Iran, while the U.S. is also threatening sanctions. Naomi Ruckham, she has more from New York. The State Department says it has credible information that Iranian drones were used in Russia's recent airstrikes on Ukraine, despite denials from Moscow and Tehran. And it says Iran has been directly involved. We assess that Iranian personnel, Iranian military personnel, were on the ground in Crimea and assisted Russia in these operations. The U.S. has vowed to make it harder for Iran to sell weapons to Russia. Thursday, Britain sanctioned Iranian military officials and a defense manufacturer, while the European Union said it too has agreed on sanctions. They try to destroy our critical infrastructure. They want to make our citizens freezing in the winter. 
Ukrainian officials say there have been more than 300 missile and drone attacks on its energy facilities in the past 10 days, causing the country to begin restricting electricity usage this week. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, warns Russia could be planning to blow up a dam at a major hydroelectric power plant, which could cause devastating floods in southern Ukraine, including the city of Kherson. Thousands of residents in the now Russian-occupied city swarmed its ports this week to evacuate. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Well, Israel's prime minister tweeted that he expressed deep concern over Iran's involvement with Russia. That was in a call with Ukraine's foreign minister yesterday. Ukraine has asked for air defense systems, but so far Israel has refused to give those weapons to Ukraine. Well, switching gears, speculation this morning about who will become Britain's next leader. Liz Truss announced her resignation as prime minister shortly, replacing the country's last leader, Boris Johnson. Now, Truss historically short six weeks at 10 Downing Street. It was marked by both economic and political turmoil. I recognize, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. Britain's ruling Conservative Party says it'll name a replacement for Prime Minister Liz Truss by the end of next week. Now, opposition leaders and many in the public now calling for a general election rather than allow the Conservative Party to name a new Prime Minister. Well, there's another possibility that freight railroad workers may go on strike. This comes just after the major freight railroads rejected a request Wednesday from one of the workers unions to add seven days to paid sick time. Now that would have been on top of the 24% raise they received in the initial contract. So far, six of those 12 unions that represent the 115,000 workers have approved the agreements, but all of them have to approve the contracts to avoid a strike. Well, hey, before we get to weather, take a look at this. Now, one of nature's most anticipated light shows is happening right now. Now, space debris and dust, Trails from the famous Com Comet Halley were scattered across the night sky, but you need to hurry if you want to get the best view. It'll be easiest to see just before dawn. And the cool part, you won't need any special equipment. NASA suggests just looking anywhere in the night sky that is away from the moon to best observe those fireballs. Now, they say they'll be visible from every region in the world, weather permitting. So. The silly. That is my question. I have devices this morning. One is saying it's mostly cloudy outside the phone, saying it's clear. That's why we have you, a human, to be able to tell us what's <laughs> actually going on, because I'm excited. Yeah, we're seeing clear skies right now, so there is a chance of seeing that meteor shower possibly today, but it, we will start to see clouds roll in today as well. So this morning we will see clear skies. As you can see here, here's a live look at downtown Boise. Clear skies out right now with a, a temperature of about 49 degrees. There is a southeasterly wind of about three miles per hour right now. Now future cast showing we will have this clear sky this morning, but clouds will start to roll in this afternoon. We're going to see showers as well as colder temperatures due to this cold front making its way in to the gem state. This is going to continue on into early next week as well with spot showers popping up here and there throughout the next couple of days. We might clear up Sunday into Sunday night into Monday morning, but as you can see right here, there is a storm cell making its way into the gem state later on Monday. Now here's a look at the projected rain totals. We're going to see about two thirds of an inch of rain here in Boise and then about three quarters of an inch of rain over in McCall. So rain coming into the Treasure Valley and here's a look at the snowfall. That's mostly going to be at areas 6,000 feet or higher. So around the central mountains, we're going to see about 6 to 12 inches of snow or 6 to 12. Yeah, there. And so extended forecast for you. We're going to see temperatures drop heading into the weekend. 55 degrees on Saturday with periods of rain. That's going to drop into the low 50s throughout much of the early next week. We're going to see partly cloudy skies with spot showers popping up here and there. And those lows going to drop into the mid to low 30s. 32 degrees on from Sunday to Monday. So chilly temperatures ahead of us. And then over in the mountains, we're going to see a rain snow mixture on Saturday. As I said, snow is going to be at levels above 6,000 feet and those lows dropping into the low 20s and even into the teens. 
Oh yeah, those chilly mornings are moving in, especially mm -hmm. for our friends in the mountains. Oh yeah, it's definitely getting cold over there. There is a chance of snow in some areas too. Yep, be ready for that. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing you team traffic all morning long. Taking a live look out there this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is looking good on this Friday, folks. We made it. When you do eventually get in the car, just make sure you turned on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Looking good out there. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a respiratory virus already making its way around this fall. Why the American Lung Association is trying to raise awareness of RSV. And later, the way drugs are being disguised are causing concerns. Why officials worry fentanyl may be the top of the list for concerns this Halloween. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. It's 524. Welcome back. It may be time to stock up your medicine cabinet. Health experts say it's going to be a rough winter when it comes to the flu and coronavirus. They say derivatives of the Omicron variant could cause coronavirus infections to surge over the winter. And one doctor naming those Omicron derivatives the Scrabble variants because they have letters like Q and X. But they're no game. They do appear to be more transmissible. And another big concern this winter is respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. Now the virus already spreading among children. Wendy Gillette has more on the new campaign to educate families about the warning signs. Five-year-old Alex and Diego Lopez were born premature. Doctors in Chicago warned their parents that respiratory viruses could be dangerous for the twins, especially respiratory syncytial virus. RSV was something that we were very careful about not going to visit them if we were getting sick, any type of cold symptom. Diego first got RSV when the boys were about a year old. He had a difficult time breathing. Diego has had pneumonia three times. Alex has actually been admitted into the hospital more than six times due to complications from probably RSV and other respiratory viruses. RSV is the leading cause of hospitalization of all infants. A new campaign from the American Lung Association is teaching parents about RSV, which is so common most children have been infected by age two. While most people will develop mild symptoms, it can be life-threatening. Biggest complications are the pneumonia, and bronchiolitis as it hits the lungs that can cause respiratory failure in children. 58,000 children under five are hospitalized and as many as 300 die every year due to RSV infection. Dr. Juanita Mora says parents need to watch out for the warning signs. This is a time to talk to your pediatrician, head to the emergency department. Anyone is at risk. The Lopez family dealt with severe RSV in the summer of 2021 and this past March when Alex spent the night in the ICU. Be an advocate for your kids. If you think something's wrong, don't be afraid to call the pediatrician. She says parents know their children and should trust their instincts. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. And patients at higher risk for severe illnesses from RSV, they include premature infants and children under two with lung disease or congenital heart disease as well as kids with weakened immune systems and seniors. A reminder, every year RSV kills about 14,000 adults over 65 years old. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News, giving parents the tools to understand the challenges that children face. The event here in Idaho, hoping to inform parents on mental health. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2 News. Of course, you can always join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, Boise police released body cam video one year after the deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. What the new footage reveals about the deadly attack. Plus, a new bill taking aim at drag shows in Idaho. A look at the argument from both sides. Plus, Boise State facing off with Air Force tomorrow. What a win could mean for the Broncos. 
CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. A little bit chillier to start your morning today. By 11 a.m., it'll be 59 degrees. That'll jump up to 64 by 1 p.m., leading to the high of 68 to 69 degrees by 5 p.m. Right now, temperatures a little bit cooler, 49 degrees in Boise, 46 over in Nampa, and 38 degrees in Mountain Home. Over in eastern Oregon and Ontario, about 42 degrees right now, and up in the mountains, 37 degrees over in McCall. Future cast showing us this storm cell that's going to make its way over over much of southern Idaho and the Gem State in total, we're going to see a lot of rain overnight Saturday, and those clouds are going to stick around throughout the weekend into Sunday as well. Sunday, we're going to see clouds and some spot showers, and those spot showers will continue continue into early next week. Here's a look at high temperatures across the Treasure Valley. 69 here in Boise, 70 throughout much of the valley, 70 in Emmett, Mountain Home, Nampa, Caldwell, and Ontario. 55 degrees going to be the high in McCall. Well, yeah, the cold air moving in. Thank you, Vasily. It is 531 on your Friday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. We are looking good out there this morning. Uh, volume staying low and still no reports of anything set to slow you down. Love that on us Friday, guys. When you get in the car, make sure you're tuning to News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. It's been almost one year since the deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. Now on October 25th of last year, the shooter killed two people at the mall. Several others, including an officer, were injured. CBS 2's Michaela Elich, she shares new information on that shooting spree. We do want to warn you that the video may be disturbing to some. <laughs> Fired. Body cam footage showing the responding officers seeking out the shooter just north of the mall. In this video, you can see as they approached him, he opened fire. One officer fired back before advancing on the dumpsters and finding Jacob Bergquist behind them, dead from a self-inflicted wound. On the video released by Boise Police, you can also see the bullet hole in a patrol vehicle's windshield. There's also a photo of an officer's hat that was skimmed by a bullet. That officer was wounded in the eye and almost a year later has not been able to return to duty. North of Dave & Buster's. The body cam shows just how chaotic and terrifying the situation was. We know that there are a lot of thoughts, emotions, and feelings as we approach this one-year anniversary, and we recognize what a, uh, what a huge impact it was to our entire community. Two people were killed that day and others injured. We hope and we pray that all of those affected in, in this event and in others that uh, involve our community, that there can be some measure of peace and some measure of comfort through the very difficult times such as this. The Twin Falls prosecuting attorney reviewed that investigation and determined the officer was justified in using deadly force and said, quote, by doing so, he likely saved the lives of many citizens. Well, switching gears this morning, a Meridian man now spending his life behind bars for murdering his nine year old son. 31 year old Eric Asuna has no chance of parole after killing his son Emric. His wife Monique already serving life in prison for first degree murder. She was sentenced back in June. Court records, they show that the couple physically, emotionally and psychologically abused their son and that Mr. Osuna watched his son be starved, beaten and tortured and as well as forced to do hours of physical exercise. A nanny camera caught recorded the abuse. He died on September 2nd of 2020. Well, a warning from for parents ahead of Halloween to always check your kids candy. Now officials most recently found one case in California at LAX security of fentanyl disguised as sweet treats. Now the police department in Berkeley, California also arrested a suspect carrying Rambo fentanyl. The concern is that the drugs could accidentally be mixed with Halloween candy as drug dealers use kid friendly packaging to disguise the opioid. I'd like to think that somebody would would not be creating something to give to kids that is so incredibly harmful. But you just can't be too careful. Authorities say parents need to watch out for your kids candy 
as well as its packaging, they say just be aware. Well, a draft bill in Idaho looking to ban drag performances in public spaces. That bill would also allow parents to sue if their child saw a show and was harmed by it. Now, the Idaho Family Policy Center says it wants to protect the virtue of children. Drag just in general, you have men on stage in lingerie acting as a woman, and this just isn't appropriate for kids. But those against the bill worry it will do only more harm to a group of people that's already marginalized. Anything that might disturb you, a sexual performance in the park, that's already illegal. We don't have to worry about that. And I think what this group is trying to do is create a boogeyman and create fear um, around a certain community. This bill comes as we've seen a burned pride flag and anti-LGBTQ community center windows smashed in here in Boise just in recent weeks. Well, parents in CUNA at the CUNA High School yesterday evening, they met to discuss mental health. It was the Save My Family event. They let parents hear from experts on the major forces impacting their kids in today's world. They say things like social media are having a huge impact on our kids. Now, Kelly Rich is a school nurse and an organizer of the event. She says she's seen firsthand some of the issues kids have with mental health and wants to give parents the tools they need to better understand the challenges their kids face. Once they start getting into middle and high school, that's where I see panic attacks a lot, a lot of depression and anxiety. Kelly says one of the biggest things you can do is wait to give kids access to social media until they fully understand the effects it can have. More events like this one are being planned in the future. You can go to committosixteen.org to learn more about local upcoming events. And if you or a loved one is struggling with their mental health, don't be afraid to reach out. You're not alone. The Idaho Suicide Crisis Lifeline is always available. Just dial that number on your screen and you don't have to be suicidal to give them a call. Well, looking ahead, the Broncos heading to Colorado Springs for a game against Air Force. That's tomorrow. It's been a chaotic first half of the season for the Broncos, but things are settling down as Boise State is still atop the Mountain West. Now, this week's Air Force clash gives the team the chance to virtually eliminate one of their division rivals from conference contention. You can watch the game on CBS Sports Network. That's at 5 o'clock sharp again on Saturday. Oh, hopefully the Broncos can come yeah. out with a win that day. They've been pretty hot recently. That's so. been doing pretty well. Can't yeah. complain. And it's looking like, of course, no matter if you're out grilling or you're going to be inside watching the game, mm -hmm. you want to at least have a rain jacket, possibly, oh, yeah. depending on where you are. So, Vasily's here to break it down for yeah, us. Yeah, take those rain jackets out of the closet because you're going to need them the next couple of days. As for that Boise State game, we're going to see about 70 degrees over in Colorado Springs at Falcon Stadium. Going to be a beautiful day there for the game if you're making that 13-hour drive from Boise to Colorado Springs. But if you're not, if you're watching it on TV here in the Gem State, you're going to see rain out the, your window. Showers are going to start later today and then periods of rain will continue throughout Saturday. There is a chance of snow at level or at elevations around 6,000 feet or higher. And here in the Gem, or here in the Treasure Valley, we're going to see a chilly and weak a windy weekend ahead. This high pressure we've been dealing with over the past couple of days is on its way out as this low pressure system makes its way into the Treasure Valley. We're going to see showers, colder temperatures. Take a look at that rain that just passed over Saturday morning and we're going to continue to see spurts of rain throughout the weekend and that'll continue on into early next week. We may clear up on Sunday, but this storm cell right there will make its way into the valley as of Monday night or Tuesday morning. High temperatures for today 69 in Boise around much of the Treasure Valley. We're going to see 70 degrees, 70 degrees in Mountain Home, Nampa, Caldwell, Emmett, as well as over in Ontario. And then up in the mountains, 55 degrees going to be the high in McCall. Moved in the seven day forecast, we're going to see 68 degrees today, but that'll drop to 55 degrees on Saturday, about a 12 to 13 degree difference from Friday to Saturday. And those highs are going to stay in the mid to low 50s throughout the weekend and into early next week. It's going to get a a lot chillier here in the Treasure Valley with lows dropping to just about freezing or just a little bit above freezing. Yeah, you're going to want to have those heaters ready and cranked come the weekend, especially oh, yeah. if you're up north. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. If you're up in the mountains, make sure you got the heater ready, fireplace ready, because it's going to get chilly over there. Yes, it is. You heard it here first. Thank you, Vasily. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the roads outside right now because CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. 
looking quiet out there this morning. Uh, still no reports of anything slowing you down. It's looking good. Hey, what we like to see. So when you get in the car, make sure you're tuning to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, hey folks, it's time for our question of the day. That question is, according to a new survey, women say they feel more creative if they have this nearby. Hmm. All right, Vasily, we're going to quiz you. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this one's a little what bit tough think? for me. I'm still thinking about this one right now. Sarah, what do you think? Oh, my immediate reaction, wine, obviously. Ah, okay. um, maybe a having a, a pet nearby? Pet? Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah I like that guess a lot. Uh, pet's a good one. Maybe a, a book or something. I don't know. Yeah, Just no. get, throwing out guesses out here. There's lots of ways to get the creative juices flowing. Mm -hmm. Carissa says coffee. coffee. That's a great one right there. I say cheers to that this morning, Carissa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's see what else. Morgan says Green wine. There, I'm, wine. I'm liking this, guys. We're a simpatico this morning. Let's see what else folks have to say. Doug says hey, a dog. We're all on the same page okay, here. Okay, maybe this survey. Maybe I put together this survey, guys. <laughs> you never know. All right, <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, you don't like any of these, just head on down to the CBS2 Facebook page or our Twitter. You can guess on our question of the day post, and we'll read some more of your guesses and reveal the answer right before CBS This Morning. Coming up on CBS2 News, some thieves do going after different kinds of sunken treasure why people are taking home chunks of this shipwreck. CBS2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecasts across the gem state. Over in Caldwell, 68 degrees, partly cloudy sky is going to be the conditions today. That'll drop to 46 degrees overnight as the rain starts to make its way in. And then the highs tomorrow is going to drop all the way down to 54 degrees. Moving over to McCall, it's going to be 55 degrees there and the rain's going to start today. Tonight, the low will drop to 59 or 29 degrees and then tomorrow it'll drop all the way down to 42. They'll get a rain snow mixture there. Thank you, Vasily. Well, while it's clear here in Idaho, wildfire smoke in Washington state making it hard to breathe. Now air quality in parts of the state are getting dangerous. Students in some places are being kept inside for recess PE and even sports are being put on hold. Now some outdoor field trips being canceled as well. We couldn't justify keeping the students up in that area, it's so close to the wildfires, the um, air quality index up there was up past 250 and it was about 150 here. So we felt like the safest thing to do was to bring them home early. According to the National Interagency Fire Center, 16 fires are burning across Washington state. In the meantime, here in Idaho, we have a total of 23 large fires still burning. The largest is the Ross Fork Fire that's sitting at nearly 38 thousand acres. Well, a shipwreck uncovered by low water levels in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, facing a new threat. Now some traveling to come and see that ferry boat are apparently leaving with a bit more than just their memories. Now Lester Dewey reports some even taking a piece of the boat home for themselves. From near and far, people are flocking to the Baton Rouge Riverfront looking to get a glimpse of a piece of history rising from the water. 15 years I've been an office bound bureaucrat and so this is one of the cooler things I've seen in those 15 years. You don't get to see shipwrecks very often. And this boat sank in 1915. So we met state archaeologist Chip McGimsey a little more than a week ago where he identified a portion of an early 1900s era Baton Rouge ferry boat, the SS Brookhill. We're really dependent on the river uh, to you know, let's give us a chance to see these things. But now McGimsey says he's caught a few people stealing pieces of the boat as souvenirs. I mean, absurd is the, <laughs> the word that comes to mind most often. We're not entirely sure what that is other than it's an iron bar. He says it's fine to look at it, take pictures of it, walk around in it and more, but the boat is actually state property since it was found at the bottom of the river. And so taking pieces off of her is not appropriate. It's actually illegal. Um, and it's just important to remember that, you know, this isn't just a piece of trash that anybody can sort of walk away with. This is a part of history that belongs to all the citizens of Louisiana, just not somebody who wants to put a piece on their mantle. McGimsey says in the grand scheme of things, this is just a typical work boat. But for other people, it's a piece of Baton Rouge history. I traveled all the way from New Orleans to see this boat. 
This is history. These folks wish there was a way to preserve the boat for everyone to see. You know, 100 years from now, it would be amazing for my son's grandkids to yes. come out here and see what was here 100 years from now. You know, yeah. you know that's how we <laughs> learn about history. But the boat will stay put and the river will come and bury it once again. One, it would take millions of dollars to get her out. I mean, you would literally have to dismantle her board by board, number all the pieces. As for now, McGimsey urges everyone to enjoy it while we can. You know, who knows the next time the river will be down. She may not be here then. Uh, you know, we'll see what Old Man River does. Before the next treasure comes washing ashore. In Baton Rouge, I'm Lester Duway. Well, turning trash into treasure. Environmental artist Marina Debris creates sculptures using garbage that washes ashore at her local beach. Yeah, take a look at this. Now, debris works are made wholly of reused materials or as close as she can get to that. That includes the wires used to connect pieces to the hand drill she uses, which she just found dumped on a street. Even the plastic bags she uses collect the rubbish that have been either found on the street or rescued from recycling bins where they don't belong. I cannot go a day. I feel guilty if I go a day without coming down here. And I'm pretty much the only one who collects on this beach that I know of. So I feel like I'm kind of the steward of this particular beach. And it's pretty bad, like it gets, it can get really bad. Well, Debris, she's been doing it for about 20 years or over 20 years. Wow, she says she wants to remind people that their actions, they matter. And if anyone picked up just one piece of trash, it could make a huge difference. How cool. Oh, it's hard to watch other people live in your dreams. <laughs> I was gonna say, that's no great to see. I love yeah. being able to see the stuff reused, recycled. Mm -hmm. I mean, How resourceful people can be, it's awesome. No, it's yeah. fantastic. And also spending some time at the beach, oh, yeah. which obviously we are landlocked here <laughs> in Idaho. Not very many beaches here. <laughs> and you may not wanna be heading to the beach today, guys, because we have a cold front headed our way. Yeah, cold front <laughs> definitely headed our way. It's going to bring colder temperatures as well as precipitation, not only here in the valley, but over in the mountains as well. This morning, however, very clear 49 degrees, a little bit chilly out this morning with a southeasterly breeze of about three miles per hour. But the clouds will start to roll in this morning. That high pressure system we've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks on its way out. As you can see here, clouds will roll in this afternoon and we're going to have overnight showers as this cold front makes its way in. Showers and cold temperatures will continue throughout the weekend and into early next week. We're going to see clouds persist throughout Saturday into Sunday and then Sunday could clear up, but we have this little storm cell right here making its way into the valley as well. Projected rain totals for tomorrow. We're going to see about two thirds of an inch of rain here in Boise and about three quarters of an inch of rain over in McCall. As for snow, we're going to see snow over in most of the mountains elevations above 6,000 feet and we're going to see about six to eight Eight inches of, of snow over in the mountain areas as well. It could be about three to six and some smaller elevations. Moving over to the extended forecast, 68 degrees today with late showers moving in and then we'll see the temperatures drop to 55 degrees on Saturday and we're going to stay in the mid to low 50s throughout much of early next week with mostly cloudy skies throughout it as well and those lows going to drop to uh, at or just about at or just above freezing on multiple different days. And then over in the mountains, we're gonna see a similar trend with temperatures dropping below average about 10 degrees. High is gonna meet in the mid to low 40s. Yep, it is going to get downright cold up there. Oh yeah, downright <laughs> cold up in the mountains here in the Treasure Valley as well, going to be below average. All right guys, time to get those heaters cranking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vasily. Mm -hmm. CBS2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Taking a live look out there this morning. Yeah, we are looking good. A few more headlights. Uh, still no reports of anything set to slow you down or be in your way this morning. When you do eventually get in the car, make sure you're tuning to News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, like just about anything else, you can expect to spend more on Halloween this year. How much experts expect us to shell out for the holiday.
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 554. Welcome back. The Biden administration's federal student loan forgiveness program survived two court challenges Thursday. Now, a federal judge in Missouri dismissed a lawsuit brought by six GOP led states. While the U.S. Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett denied a request by Wisconsin taxpayer group to put the program on hold. Millions of Americans already applying for that relief up to $20,000 since the application launched just one week ago. Well, Americans expected to spend big on Halloween. Now it's the most they've seen since before the pandemic. And Michael George tells us how inflation is now affecting prices. For the last two years, Kelly Ryder hasn't been able to celebrate Halloween the way she wanted to because of the pandemic. But this year, she's making up for lost time. Are you going big on Halloween this year? Really going big. We're doing a lot of different neighborhood festivals. The kids are all going to get dressed up. We're doing trick-or-treating, the whole nine yards. The National Retail Federation predicts Halloween shopping this year will return to pre-pandemic levels, with Americans spending an estimated $10.6 billion on costumes, candy, and decorations. But this year, it will all cost more due to inflation. Candy alone is up 13%. We're all in and I think people just want to, they just want to have fun again. Julie Rame, chief marketing officer for Party City, says they're not seeing the supply chain issues that impacted the holiday last year. So there should be plenty of Spider-Man outfits, which is expected to be the year's top costume. And others are flying off the shelf. Encanto was a smash hit. That's a really big one as well. We have Top Gun 2. My favorite, the Sanderson sisters, get together with a couple girlfriends, you know, do the hocus pocus thing. Another growing trend, pet costumes. Americans are expected to spend 700 million on dog and cat costumes. For Kelly, it's all money well spent. Everything is more expensive. But still worth doing? Yeah, of course. For her first real Halloween in three years. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, giving parents the tools to understand the challenges their children face. The event here in Idaho, hoping to inform parents on mental health. And later, more airstrikes shocking Ukraine. The action being taken against Russia and Iran as hundreds of attacks hit the country. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. We'll be back at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, Boise Police released body cam video one year after the deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. What the new footage reveals about the deadly attack. Plus a new bill taking aim at drag shows in Idaho. A look at the argument from both sides. Plus Boise State facing off with Air Force tomorrow. What a win could mean for the Broncos. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and happy Friday. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Thursday, or pardon me, it's Friday. <laughs> it's October 21st, 2022. Oh my gosh. Vasily, I need more coffee. <laughs> <laughs> what day is it? It is Friday, folks. Let's confirm that because yeah, everyone week. Was... very excited. Not only do we have a Broncos game tomorrow, mm -hmm. but big changes blowing our way. Yeah, big changes on the way for our weather pattern. We're, we've been seeing sunny skies for the past couple of weeks. Now we're going to see clouds as well as precipitation. Partly cloudy skies out today with a high of 68 to 69 degrees. This morning, we're going to be a little bit chillier. 49 out by 9 a.m. That'll jump to 59 by 11 a.m. leading to that high by 5 p.m. Temperatures outside right now, 48 degrees in Boise, 46 over in Nampa, and 39 in Mountain Home, a little bit chillier there. 42 over in Eastern Oregon and Ontario, and then up in the mountains, 34 degrees right now in McCall. We're going to see those clouds start to roll into the Treasure Valley by Friday afternoon, and then we'll see overnight showers here in the valley. We're going to start to see clouds as well as a few spot showers make their way into the valley Saturday, and Saturday is going to continue to just see periods of rain and then by Sunday we'll start to 
clear up with the rain, but the clouds will st continue to be around the Treasure Valley, and we're going to see clouds throughout Sunday as well. High temperatures around the valley, mostly 70 degrees, 69 to 70 here in Boise, 70 degrees across much of the valley, Mountain Home, Nampa, Caldwell, Emmett, Ontario, all seeing 70 degrees, and then up in the mountains, 55 degrees in McCall. All right, a great start to our Friday. Thank you, Vasily. It is 602. And you are looking live out there at CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. Bring you team traffic all morning long. Looking good out there. We are expected to see a little more traffic as we head closer to the 7 o'clock hour. But as far as the 6 o'clock hour right now, looking good. No reports of anything set to slow you down, both eastbound or westbound. So when you get in the car, just make sure you tune to News Talk KBOI. It's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Boise police just released body cam video showing the response from two officers to last year's deadly shooting at the Boise Town Square Mall. We do want to warn you that the video may be disturbing to some. <laughs> On October 25th of last year, the shooter killed two people at the mall, several others injured, including a police officer. Now in the video, as police approached that shooter, he opened fire. One officer fired back before advancing, then finding the suspect behind a dumpster dead from a self-inflicted wound. We know that there are a lot of thoughts, emotions and feelings as we approach this one year anniversary and we recognize what a uh, what a huge impact it was to our entire community. The Twin Falls prosecuting attorney reviewed that investigation. He determined the officer was justified in using deadly force and said, quote, by doing so, he likely saved the lives of many citizens. Switching gears, a draft bill in Idaho aiming to ban drag performances in public spaces when kids are around. Now, the Idaho Family Policy Center says it wants to, quote, protect the virtue of children. But those against the bill say it's dangerous for a group of people that's already marginalized. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall spoke to both sides. The bill drafted by the Idaho Family Policy Center would ban drag performances in public when children are present. The bill would also allow parents to sue if their child saw such a show and was harmed by it. In that instance, um, the, the child and the family would have what we call a cause of action to sue for damages um, to recover for the harm that they suffered. Blaine Kanzadi is president of the Idaho Family Policy Center. He's not concerned about a constitutional challenge to the bill. The state constitution says that the first responsibility of the state legislature is to pass laws that promote public morality, public virtue, and protect the purity of the home. He argues drag performances are inherently sexual and kids shouldn't be around them. Drag just in general, you have men on stage in lingerie acting as a woman, and this just isn't appropriate for kids. Dee Banks has been a drag performer for 22 years. I started drag because it was a way for me to express myself that I wasn't allowed to express when I was a teenager in high school. For D, drag is a kind of art. Drag shows are an expression of pop culture, whatever's relevant in, in the time or whatever's happening. Anything that might disturb you, a sexual performance in the park, that's already illegal. We don't have to worry about that. And I think what this group is trying to do is create a boogeyman and create fear. Um, around a certain community. Democratic lawmaker Laura Nekochea says she believes that fear is dangerous. A bill like this could attempt to criminalize just being transgender and just walking, you know, down the street or being in a public place. The part that's not laughable is the fact that the suicide rates are going to skyrocket because people are going to be repressed. The bill comes as we've seen a burned pride flag and LGBTQ community centers windows smashed in Boise in recent weeks. We've already seen some targeted attacks on the LGBTQ community in Idaho and here in Boise. So what would you say to someone who thinks, you know, a bill like this could only make things worse for that community? So um, this legislation is not attacking any particular group or any particular person. It's simply saying that certain sexual behaviors don't belong in public. Nakuchea expects strong opposition if the bill is brought before the legislature. Now, if that bill were to pass the Idaho legislature, Nekachia says it'll almost certainly end up in court. Well, parents met at CUNA High School yesterday evening to discuss mental health. The Save My Family event 
Let parents hear from experts on the major forces impacting kids in today's world. They say things like social media having a huge effect on our kids. Kelly Rich is the school nurse and organizer of the event. She says she's seen firsthand some of the issues kids have with mental health and wants to give parents the tools they need to better understand the challenges their kids face. Once they start getting into middle and high school, that's where I see panic attacks a lot, a lot of depression and anxiety. Kelly says one of the best things you can do is to wait to give your kids access to social media until they fully understand the effects it can have on them. More events like this one are being planned for the future. You can go to committto16.org to learn more about local upcoming events. And if you or a loved one is struggling with mental health, don't be afraid to reach out. You're not alone. The Idaho Suicide Crisis Lifeline is always available. You just dial those numbers on your screen. And a reminder, you don't have to be suicidal to give them a call. Well, looking ahead, the Broncos heading to Colorado Springs for a game against the Air Force. That's tomorrow. It's been a chaotic first half of the season for the Broncos, but things are settling down for Boise State, who's still atop the Mountain West. Now, this week's Air Force clash gives the team the chance to virtually eliminate one of their division rivals from conference contention. Yeah, it, like it's going to be difficult. They're, they're great at what they do. They do it well. And they do it better than anybody else in the country. And so it's our job to, to do our best and make sure that, again, we're in the right places at the right time and, and working all together because you've got to stay, you got to stay on the string. Everybody's got to do their part every single play. If, they, if there's a chink in the armor, they'll find it. And so that's going to be a challenge for us. You can catch the game on CBS Sports Network. That's at 5 o'clock sharp on Saturday. Should be a great game. Yes, it will. I mean, I guess you could drive all the way to Colorado Springs, but 13 hours. <laughs> that's, that's it's a little way. bit too much for me. <laughs> yeah, and definitely you're going to be running into some great um, changes of leaves, but also changes of temperature. Yeah, changes at least of heading for us our way. Yeah, changes of temperature cold. are ahead. It's going to be a nice day over in Colorado Springs for that game. 77 degrees over in Denver and Colorado Springs tomorrow. They're going to top out at around 72 degrees. So beautiful conditions over there. Here in the Treasure Valley, we're going to top at it around 70 degrees today and we're going to continue to cool down as we enter the weekend. Now today we're going to see showers start to roll in late and then periods of rain will continue throughout Saturday. There's also a possibility of snow at elevation levels around 6,000 feet or above. Now here in the Treasure Valley we're going to experience a chilly and windy weekend as this low pressure system rolls in. Now the high pressure we've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks on its way out and we're going to see this rain come in as well as colder temperatures. Temperatures will drop into the mid 50s, which is about 10 degrees below the average of 63 degrees for this time of year. We've been dealing with temperatures above 10 degrees above average for the last week or so. So a big shift in conditions here in the Treasure Valley. We should clear up Sunday, but there is a storm on its way. Now, chances of precipitation today we will just see some isolated showers, but as of tonight, we're likely likely to see a lot of showers here in the valley. Saturday we'll see some slightly scattered showers. Moving over to the extended forecast, we'll see temperatures drop about 13 degrees today into tomorrow, 55 degrees expected tomorrow, and then we'll see 52 on Sunday and Monday, 53 degrees expected on Tuesday. So we're going to continue to sit in the mid 50s throughout the week. Yeah, that's quite the drop off. <laughs> oh yeah, quite the drop off. Definitely going to get chilly over here. Oh, those overnight lows. All right, get ready. Keep those heaters cranked. Oh yeah, keep oh them on ready to go. All right, thank you, Vasily. Let's get a check of the roads out there as CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It's looking good out there this morning so far. Um, of course, not looking at a lot happening, but let's get a true check from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Good morning, Ron. Well, good morning. It's a quiet one. Yes, uh, starting off very calm. Usually this time of the morning, traffic on the light side. And for Friday mornings, at least ID4 tends to be lighter than usual, even really in the 7 o'clock hour. Don't tend to get the uh, full buildups. But uh, right now, yep, everything quiet away from the freeways, too. Good start. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. When you get in the car, make sure you're tuning to News Talk KBOI at 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, more airstrikes shock Ukraine. 
the action being taken against Russia and Iran as hundreds of attacks hit the country. Plus, look to the sky, the light show happening right now as a famous comet flies by. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Nearly 40% of people polled admit they don't have the confidence to do this. That answer, trying out some new fashion trends. Yeah, here the 90s are back. Well, let's change to today's question. According to a new survey, women say they feel more creative if they have this nearby. All right, folks, what is it? CBS2 Adventure Weather showing you local forecasts across the gym. Stay over in Weezer, 67 degrees and partly cloudy skies expected today. That'll drop to 42 degrees overnight as the rain rolls in. And then tomorrow's high expected to reach 56 degrees. Moving over to Council, they'll see a light rain today with a high of 62 degrees. That'll drop to 41 degrees overnight, leading to the high of 50 degrees tomorrow in Council. Thank you, Vasily. It is 6.15 in the morning. New airstrikes shook cities in Ukraine this morning. The U.S. confirming that Russia used drones from Iran in this week's attacks and that their military officials were in Crimea. Now, already Europe has taken steps to penalize Iran, while the U.S. is also threatening sanctions. Naomi Ruckham, she has the latest from New York. The State Department says it has credible information that Iranian drones were used in Russia's recent airstrikes on Ukraine, despite denials from 